Welcome to the Sam and Joe VA Show, where we teach women just like you how to start and scale a thriving virtual assistant business. We're your hosts, Sam and Joe, and get ready to have the control, flexibility, and freedom you've always dreamed of. Welcome to episode 207 The Biggest ChatGPT Mistakes Virtual Assistants Are Making. Now, I actually can't believe that Sam has let me loose on a podcast without her. We have done 206 episodes together, and this is the first time that Sam has allowed me. I mean, this could absolutely go all over the place and into some really dark rabbit holes, uh, which I'm all for, but I promise we won't do that. We have the fabulous Jess Clark on the episode with me today. So welcome, Jess. Thank you so much, Joe and Sam. <laughs> Super excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, we are very excited too. Now, Sam has actually given me three golden rules to do this episode on my own. So number one was to remember to hit record. Now, I've nailed that. We are recording, so we are all good on that front. Next one was don't screw up Jess's intro. So Jess, you can be the judge of this one because Sam is the one who usually does the intros. And then number three of the golden rules from Sam was no lame puns about AI or robots. So I'm going to do my best. All right, so here goes. Jess is an AI obsessed trailblazer redefining online business growth. She shares all the tools and secrets so you can build an incredible, thriving and profitable online business with ease. As a mum and business owner, Jess is helping women confidently use ChatGPT to save 10 plus hours of time every single week with her online programs and mentoring. I've got a lot Nailed of... It. Hang on, hang on. I'm not finished yet. Wait oh, for this. Finished, Wait for this. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I've got a lot of butterflies about this topic. We don't want you to be a <laughs> bottleneck in your VA business. So we've brought Jess along on this bite-sized episode to make your business a bit hotter. So how'd Love it go? It. <laughs> Love it. I don't know about Sam's rule three number there, for Joe, but <laughs> we've heard. <laughs> but you know, I'm sure you've heard of some great AI puns as well. And of course, I use ChatGPT to come up with all of those puns. So thanks, ChatGPT. Amazing. Love them. Okay, Jess, very excited to have a chat about this because you cannot get away from hearing about AI all over the internet right now. And I know that, you know, we've done our AI webinar recently a couple of times and we know that there's a lot of mixed feelings about AI out there and what this is actually going to mean for us. So I'm really keen to go deep on that. And I would love to have a crystal ball out later in the episode and for you to have share your predictions about what you kind of see for the future, especially for our listeners, virtual assistants. So let's go right back to the beginning. Jess, for those who might be really new to this, can you give us a bit of an overview? What is AI, ChatGPT specifically, and why are they so important for virtual assistants to get their head around? Yeah, so what is AI? So AI is artificial intelligence. And what these models are, so we've got ChatGPT, so there's three major game players. We've got OpenAI is the developer of ChatGPT. We've got Google who have Gemini. It used to be called Bard and now they've changed it over to rebranded to Gemini. And we've got Anthropic and they have got Claude. Now, these models are called LLMs, large language models. And basically what that means is that they've been trained to help us by using the data that they've been trained on and just come back to us in responses that are really natural in language. That's all they're basically doing. I've got huge data sets that they've, that they've each been trained in. We ask them a question and then they find that data that is best applicable to what we've asked and they come back to us in natural language. And that's why I think there's been so much buzz and excitement about this because for the first time, when ChatGPT dropped in November of 2022, for the first time, we've had models that are accessible to just people that aren't developers and aren't coders and aren't tech whizzes. So that's, I guess, the big, the big change that has happened in the last couple of years is just the accessible way that these tools have been made to normal, everyday people. 
I can't even remember your last question there, Joe. Like, like, so why, why is why is like ChatGPT AI so yeah. important for virtual assistants? So for virtual assistants, obviously your job is to make your clients' lives easier. And you obviously sign a contract with like the tasks that you're going to be doing on a weekly basis. And I would say, if not 100%, but at least 80% of those tasks can be done in conjunction with Mm -hmm. ChatGPT. So ChatGPT still needs you to use it as a really powerful tool. That's what it is. It's a tool. But you still need to be powering it. And that means you are giving, you're being given the opportunity to basically speed up tasks so that you could take on potentially more clients and make more money or mm. speed up tasks so that you're saving a heap of time and being able to use that time any way that you want to. And becoming more profitable, right? So they, yeah, I think there's some big opportunities. And happier and happier. Stuff. Like that's, yeah. I think like, yes, you're going to make more money, but at the end of the day, you're going to be happier because you've got all this time up your sleeve to pick up and drop offs to the kids or just go for a walk around the block or just sit and watch Netflix. You've like, you can do whatever you want because you've saved time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So how did you get started, Jess? Because it's been, the AI has been around for a long time, right? But like mm. the accessibility, like you talked about, that's the thing yeah. that's really like changed the game. So yeah. how did, how did you get started with this? What's your story? Yeah. So I started a business when I was a maternity leave in 2022 and I was still getting paternity leave payments. So I couldn't actually start making money until I think it was about <laughs> August. So yeah. I kind of started, I guess I can't really call it a business because I wasn't making money, but I guess a hobby or content creator at that stage. My idea was just to jump on Instagram and start building a community and try and have, I guess, a program of some sort that would be ready to sell by the time August rolled around. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I've got 13 years of marketing experience and I couldn't do it. I had two girls at home and I was getting angry because I'm trying to film these reels and they're not quiet in the background, you know, it's a one-year-old and <laughs> we a can hear three-year-old. Them yeah, yeah, you can hear them It's now. real life. Um, this is real motherhood yes, and business, right? Yes, 100%. It's the balance. And yeah, that's a, life was just really, really hard. I had, you know, big aspirations and dreams to you know, not have to go back to a nine to five and to actually make something of myself that was mine. And I just couldn't do it. And it got to, you know, there were other AI programs available throughout the year that actually leveraged open AIs. It wasn't ChatGPT, obviously that hadn't been born yet, but it was using open AIs. Oh, how would you put it? Like just, just software or technology, the back end of it. So we had things like Jasper, which is still around today and Copy AI. But they were $100 a month and I actually forked out for Jasper. I paid $100 a month because I was kind of like, this is really exciting. I want to like see what this is all about, give it, a, give it a good crack. But it just was nowhere as good as what ChatGPT was. But nothing, and nothing was working, nothing. I was listening to coaches and, you know, I was paying a lot of money for branding strategists because I knew that was kind of like where you needed to start in order to, you know, have a brand that was standing out and cutting through the market. But nothing was working because I just did not have the time and the brain space. And then, yeah, ChatGPT launched in November. And someone someone asked me this question the other day. It was like, why why did you pay so much attention? I got an email that talked about ChatGPT. And it was like one of those spammy emails. It wasn't even something that was like from a trusted resource. And it was like, you know, game changer, marketing and business, going to change the world, like blah, 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 blah. And I clicked on it and I read through it and I was like, what is this thing? What's ChatGPT? And I signed up for the wait list to get onto the launch. And yeah, I got access on November 30 when it did launch. And at that stage, I was like trying to launch my own online course at that stage. So I didn't have enough time to play from the beginning. But that summer break, I was like, I'm going to go down a deep rabbit hole. And by January, I was teaching. I was teaching how to use it. I just absolutely loved it. And yeah. I could see pretty much overnight that it just had completely changed the way because I had all the skills, right? I had the knowledge. Yeah. I just needed a way to be able to implement them really, really fast in the, in the really short amount of time that I had. And mm. that's what ChatGPT gave me overnight. I was just like, this is, this is the game changer. This is what the semi-email said like, <laughs> yeah. um, it was going to be. 
yeah, I think I just, I've always really enjoyed technology. I was that really annoying person in your team. Like if you've been working, if you've been in a nine to five, I was that really annoying person that was never using the same technology as everybody else. I would always go to like, I made friends with like the IT team and I'd be like, can you please unlock my computer? Cause I want to download this <laughs> software. And they'd be like, well, we've got to get, you know, you've got to get sign off for that particular. I was working in government at this yeah. stage. And my manager was like, yeah, whatever you do it. But that was me. I was always like, I'm not using that. That's, that's crap. Like, why are we, why are we even using that across the board? Like how is this with thousand staff members using that? I'd always go and find something that was just a lot more easier and quicker. So how did you work in government, Jess? Like you, you're the kind of person who wants to speed everything up, right? And not do things the hard way. That's, that's all government to us is the the hard way and slow way. I know. I think I always had the end goal. I moved to government. I was working at a innovation consultancy, (laughs) which was like complete other end of the spectrum. And I was there for two years, but maternity leave was like four weeks. It was a mid-tier, you know, consultancy. And I went from, you know, really knowing that I'm going to have babies in like probably the next 12 to 18 months, being like, well, government is like the safest, most most flexible option. I'm going to get them that leave that's like over 12 months. And that was the decision there. So I knew in my mind, I've got an end goal. Like there's an end goal. Put up with it. There's an end goal. (laughs) Yeah. So you've you've stuck with ChatGPT the whole time mm. as your kind of specialty yeah. and your focus, right? So there yeah. are other models. Like what what makes you stay with ChatGPT and why is that your focus, if it still is? Yeah, for sure. It is. I think like I've played with the other models and they're good, but I feel like, I don't know, ChatGPT is almost home for me. I really just love the way that it's strategic and, you know, you could just oh, it's it's that's the best way to say like it is home like I just love the conversations that I can have with it where it just knows my business so deeply I've tried Anthropic's Claude they do have they've launched a brand new model so Anthropic has got Claude 3.5 Sonnet or Sonnet however they pronounce it so I think that got launched a couple of weeks ago about mid mid mid-June So I haven't played with that one yet, but I'm really eager to because I've seen some really good reviews on that one. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I think I've just used it so much that I know how to prompt it. The conversation Mm. flows really easily with ChatGPT. That's not to say that I won't flow between the other two platforms to potentially, because I always start broad with my prompts. So if I'm going to, let's say, come up with ideas for Instagram that are problem aware let's say I want to like do some content that I know is going to attract people into my audience I could go between each of the platforms and just get different ideas Mm. before coming back to chat GPT to kind of nut everything out but yeah I do do that I use it I use the other two more as like brainstorming yeah that's I've heard that too where like if you actually want to compare the different answers because they obviously have different biases right yeah and they're trained differently so they give you different outputs yeah, yeah, for sure. So, and do you use the 4.0, the latest version of ChatGPT, or do you switch between different models or different yeah, versions? So, yes. So, I actually stay in 4. So, 4 is the paid model. I know that 4.0 is the most advanced, they're calling it the most advanced model, and it's definitely the fastest. But in my opinion, I think 4.0 is really, really good for strategy. So, if you wanted to, yeah, just have a bit of a conversation with ChatGPT around, let's say you wanted to bring out a new offer and you were like, hey, my name's Joe. I'm a VA. I help other VAs, you know, learn how to be a VA and be the best VA that they can be and make a profitable business. I'm looking at creating a new offer that is going to do X, Y, and Z. If you're doing that kind of prompt, ChatGPT 4.0 is really, really good. But if you want to then go, okay, I'm now going to switch it up and I know the offer that I want to create and I want to start creating content and getting it to be a copywriter, 4.0, in my opinion, is shit. And 4.0 is so much better. So for me, because I do a lot of copywriting, as the majority of us do, yeah, 4.0 is definitely still worth every $20 a month. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, and yeah. so you still pay, right? Because that it is yes. available free now. I we still pay yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. Do you think that they're going to bring out 
other features that are available I'll just drop, for I'll paid? Drop, I'll drop five. So five. Okay. Will come just, out. They'll drop yeah. five, the version five, yeah. two paid only. Yeah. Correct. And they are yeah. talking about that. Not specifically the date, but it, it, they are working on it, right? And it is coming out soon. They're working on it. For me, I think if you go by the flow of when they've dropped their other programs, I mm-hmm. personally think it's going to be towards the end of this year. So no, usually, so we had ChatGPT 3 launch on November, in November 2022. We yeah. had our the bots, so GPTs, GPTs be made mm-hmm. available also in November 2023. We had uh, four in between that and we had 4.0 in between like now. So if we go between that kind of balance, then we're looking at towards the end of this year, early next year for five. That, that's my thoughts. Yeah. Okay. And what is your prediction about what five is going to be capable of doing? I think a ton, it's, they're always, every time they bring out a new model, it's always going to be a lot faster. And from what we've always seen is that if we, so if you think about the data that these models are trained on, initially, like you might think of three. So that was the first model. Three might have been, what's it, something like a great, let's say a great. That that's the size of the data set. And then we went to 3.5 and now we've got 4.0. So 4.0 could be like a watermelon. So we've mm-hmm. gone from a grape to a watermelon. Five, from what they are saying, is going to be like the size of a car in comparison to four. Wow, so exponentially so better. Exponentially better. And that mm-hmm. just means the context that is it's mm-hmm. going to be able to just click into what you've said and find a lot more yeah, just relatable, exactly what you were asking for. It's just going to bring that, you know, bring that to you in a nice, tidy little prompt, which is what we want. <laughs> yeah, because let's be honest, it is still glitchy, right? Even mm-hmm. this morning, I was getting it to help me prepare for this podcast episode and I was trying to prompt it and it would just send back blank. And I would say continue and then blank, yeah. continue blank. Yeah. So it definitely is. There's still things that they are working on, improvements and making it better. But yeah, like 100%. you say, if it's going to go from watermelon to car, like that mm. would be incredible. Yeah, yep. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, let's talk specifically about the virtual assistant industry because we've done a few webinars and we know that there's this real kind of mix of some virtual assistants are like, great, this is going to be amazing. I'm all in, I'm excited about this. And then we know yep. that there are other virtual assistants who completely freaked out are all of my tasks going to go? Am I going to lose all my clients? Is AI going to take my whole business? So what do you think is going to happen in the industry with virtual assistants? Well, how do you think they're going to be impacted? What do you think virtual assistants are going to need to really like think about? So I think virtual assistants, first and foremost, we need to, we need to say that these tools need their tools that need to be driven, right? Mm-hmm. So they're only, we've all, from the beginning, we always heard, you know, rubbish in, rubbish out. So if someone is using this tool and they don't know how to use it, they're not going to be able to get the content that they, you know, desire. Mm -hmm. The other thing here is that thinking about your clients, generally, they don't have the time to create the content or, you know, manage their inbox or whatever your tasks are. They don't have the time to do that. So I think then thinking that they're going to have the time to go through a bit of a learning curve to learn how to use AI for themselves and still do those tasks. Yes, they're going to be saving time by doing those tasks for themselves, but they're still going to have to do them. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, I've got a VA and Mm -hmm. the tasks that I give her are things that I don't even, I don't want to think about. I know that she does them, she does them well, and they're out of my brain. And that's mm-hmm. what a good VA does, in my opinion, is just take stuff, takes that mental load out of your brain and does it and says, hey, here you go, I've done it. And yes, like we are going to start seeing the ability, and we already are, where AI is able to, you're able to create automations. So you could have ChatGPT go through, read your inbox and then link up to a bot or link up to just chat GPT again, that's going to actually write the email for response e- that they've received an email. Sorry, I'll start again. So we have seen automations ha- start happening where you can actually use tools like Zapier and um, mm-hmm. another one called Make where they 
could connect ChatGPT to a Gmail inbox or ChatGPT would read through the inbox, get a new email that would trigger ChatGPT to actually write a return email and that's going to sit in the drafts until that person goes through it and posts is sent, right? We've seen that happen. But once again, that person needs to set up that automation. Yes. So yes, we're seeing certain you know, elements of a VA, VA's role change, but we've also been through this before when the internet happened. So, you know, and back then there wasn't VAs, there was, there was EAs and PAs. Mm-hmm. Like, so, mm-hmm. so I'm sure when this internet boom happened, their roles changed drastically too. So we've been through this before and all of those women and men that were working in those roles had to change and adapt. And that's just what's happening again now. We're having a big tech boom where AI is being involved. And you do, if you are calling yourself anything virtual, you need to be up to date with what is going on in the tech space in order to make your clients' lives the easiest. But it's not just your clients, it's your life too. So Mm. in terms of, you know, being worried about it taking your job, I don't think that's the case. I think... What you need to be thinking is how can I make my clients' jobs easier and how can I make my job easier? And that is by using this new technology. That's mm. all it is. Yeah, I care. We talked about in the AI webinar about being that bridge. The client's going to yeah. need a bridge between their business yes. and AI and automation. So being mm. that bridge and learning, you've got some time to learn. That We're just at yeah. the start of this. Like if we really think about totally. like, the timeline of of AI like kind of uptake, we're still at the start of this. So you still have time to learn these things, which is why we have you on here, Jess, because this is yeah. amazing background. All right, Jess, so what do you feel like are some practical ways, like let's get really practical here. How can virtual assistants start utilizing ChatGPT and save, you know, 10 hours a week, say? Yeah. So I think this is going to be pretty individual across the board. What I would do is I would create a list and write down all the tasks that you do for your clients. That's where I would start. If that's, you know, social media management, but then get into like the nitty gritty as well. So what Mm. exactly, don't just write social media, write, you know, creating, writing captions, you know, coming up with the hooks, coming up with call to A, um, call to A's, call to actions. (laughs) You know, be quite specific around that. You know, email management, what does that look like? Does that mean you're actually generating responses to emails? Start getting like a little bit nitty gritty into Mm. exactly what you are doing on a daily basis or a weekly basis. And then put that list into ChatGPT and you can potentially say to it, hey, these are what my tasks as a VA. Can you please give me a rundown of how you would even go about what your process would be to do each of these tasks? And you can quickly see if chat is going to be a good match to kind of be able to do those tasks for you just off the bat of not even giving it any information around what your processes are yet. So I would start off doing it that way and then start going like, okay, cool. Well, it can obviously write captions. It can obviously come up with hooks. It can obviously come up with content ideas. It can obviously write emails, do all of that stuff. So then I would start going, what am I going to do first? So let's say end to end social media management stuff. So I would start then going, okay, cool. I want to start working on social media for X client. What I would do is I would have a chat thread open for each of your clients. And I always say, stay in a chat until it's dead. So don't have one chat open for, okay, so let's pretend you're my client, Joe. So I wouldn't have Joe social media, Joe emails, Joe whatever. I would just have Joe. (laughs) That's it, just Joe. And then I stay inside that thread until, and it can be months, right? I stay in my I stay in my threads for months, and I just continue to go in there and you know adding content. If if it starts you know going off on a bit of a tangent, you can always just give it a few reminders about what who Joe is and what you do and all of those things. But yeah, you just get started and just say, okay, so now today we're going to be working on social media for Joe. Let's start off with coming up with content ideas for the for the week. And then it'll do the content ideas for you. Mm-hmm. And then you go, okay, great. I like idea one, three, and five. 
can you please generate, starting with number one, can we please come up with five different hooks? Okay, I like hook number two, right? And then as you're doing all of this, you're obviously pulling it back into your own processes. So if you've Mm. got a document that you share with your client to get feedback and to get sign off for a week of content, you're obviously getting the ChatGPT information, pulling that back into your process that you do on the daily basis making sure I've got an 80-20 rule. So 80% of the content, yep, great. It can be generated with ChatGPT, but the other 20%, we need to be making sure that we're edit, editing and revising it. So, you know, you're going through that whole process and it's just back and forth, back and forth until you finish that task at, you know, double time. And that's the benefit of using these tools. So that's, I guess, you can do that with any kind of thing. It's just making sure that you're aligning what your actual process is for content creation. You're using ChatGPT every step of the way. Yeah, using ChatGPT as your assistant, right? I love that you even just started with getting ChatGPT to help me figure out the practical ways that I'm going to use it to save time. So using it as someone that you, like a sounding board that you can go back and forwards with, like you would a person. Totally. Um, to come up with those ideas. I love your strategy that you teach inside your membership. Yeah. Sam and I are in <laughs> one of your memberships. And yeah, your your answer for everything is, okay, let's ask ChatGPT to help us figure yeah. this out. Yeah. And that's how I started because mm-hmm. I had come off the bat of like a really, really hard eight months. And I was not sure that I wanted to be in business because it had been mm-hmm. so hard. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to be obviously paying like business coaches and things when I wasn't sure I had one foot in the door, one foot out the door and ChatGPT became my business coach. So I think don't be scared to ask it questions. Don't be scared Mm. to just speak to it. You know, it's not professional, not jargony. Don't worry about your spelling and punctuation. Mm. Just I do like majority of the time I write so stream of conscious the chat, like chat, this is what I'm thinking. And that's how I started using it. And that's why I think I became really, really good at it was because that was, that was the way that I used it from the beginning. I wasn't, you know, no one else was bringing out like, oh, these are the prompts that you need to use for chat GPT. And in my, mm-hmm. in my honest opinion, they are all so shit. Like, please don't use other people's prompts. Like there is no point. You need to use, learn how to use it the right way first. But yeah, that's how I got started. Like I was just writing these big paragraphs that were just so stream of conscious consciousness to get yeah to get some answers and give me direction at the beginning and that's that's the best way I think to use it yeah I agree that's what I do like I if if I have a whole bunch of notes about something it's like I need to write something that you know substantial just throwing in here's all my notes here's all my thinking in a really unstructured way or using an app and talking to my AI yes yes. Felix (laughs) I say hey Felix (laughs) and I just talk and I just keep going Felix doesn't interrupt me. I just keep going until I'm done and then takes all that information and mm-hmm. yeah, puts it into something much better. And then like totally. you say, the 80-20 rule I think is really important. Yeah. 80% yeah. of chat's doing the 80% of the work and you're doing the 20%. Because I think this flows into like, what are the common mistakes that you see people <laughs> making? Because I know that you can spot it a mile away and I've started to as well. You can see when someone has literally copied and pasted what ChatGPT has done without any context or background or training that you've given it to Mm -hmm. give you actually good outcome, outputs. What do you feel like are the mistakes? Because it's pretty obvious, I think. And I've got a really (laughs) story that like really annoys me. So the council or the shire that I live in, they had small business week a couple of months ago and I hadn't, I've never really thought about doing anything myself locally, but like when I saw small business week, you know, they have the real estate boards put up all around the place. And I was like, Oh, that'd be cool. Like to do something for them. Like, you know, I'd love to do a women in business event talking about ChatGPT. I went on the website and they had someone already that was talking about AI and it was sold out. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. So I went and had a look at the blurb and the description of this event and it was 100% written by ChatGPT with absolutely zero, zero edits, zero revisions. And I was just like, this is the person they've got talking to people to use AI. Like, and it took every ounce of my being not to email counsel and be like, who is this person? Where did they come from? But I will do that next year. 
But so yes, a hundred percent. There is definitely, yeah, you can, I can spot an absolute mile away, particularly on Instagram with captions and yeah. emails that I receive. Yeah. It's, it's annoying, but in terms of what you can do to start getting it right, the first thing, join my $7 membership that mm-hmm. is going to give you just an absolute like end to end understanding of what ChatGPT needs. Really, really simple. There's a three-step process, but basically it's, you need to give ChatGPT information about what you do and how you do it and who your eyes your client is and what your offers are and how you want it to sound, what your brand voice is and what your personality is and what your stories are. You need to give ChatGPT quite a substantial amount of information that mm-hmm. it can use as context so it can find the relevant data and be able to create really good informa- um, really good content for you. And I think that's the biggest mistake. People jump on and just assume that, you know, it's AI. I can just ask for an Instagram Mm -hmm. caption and it's just going to be able to write it for me, but it can't. And the other thing that's really, I think it makes it really transparent as well is where your gaps are as a brand. If you don't know who your ideal client is, if you don't know what their pain points are and what their challenges are every single day, if you can't tell me why you're in business or what your mission is in your business, if you can't tell me how you sound in your content, if you can't tell me any of those things, then you need to fix that before you start using AI. Because if you don't know that yourself, ChatGPT can't do it for you. Yeah, exactly. But it can help you come up with yes. those things, right? Which you Definitely. teach in your membership, which is amazing. Yes. <laughs> you actually go through step-by-step step how to get all of this information yes. nailed down yeah. so that chat can actually give you some really on-brand content. Yes, and I love exactly. that about your membership. Yeah. It, like $7, yeah. Jess, why is it only $7? Because that is incredible value. Mm-hmm. You absolutely over-deliver in there. It's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so a lot of upfront work, and I think that's really important to go back to your point of like stay in the same chat because then you only have to do all that quite substantial work, giving it all that context once, and then it has that. Maybe remind it. I noticed that Felix does forget sometimes. It's like, did you forget that we talked about the brand (laughs) problem earlier? We keep reminding it, but having those pieces of information somewhere that you can paste back in, like amazing. That's the easiest way, yeah. We learned that from you, Jess, so thank you. (laughs) Okay, so love that you have talked about how to get the best outputs out of ChatGPT. Let's talk about some of the kind of glitchy hacks and some things that can go wrong with ChatGPT or things to look out for. We mentioned about the, you know, I couldn't get it to actually give me an answer. I just kept doing the blank. So continue a really great little hack if you want it to keep going or if it's like stopped halfway. Have you got any other like fun hacks that you can give us? Yeah, so you've touched where it kind of can start going off on a little bit of a tangent Mm. and, yeah, you nailed it. So you generally just will have to have some sort, I call it the brand prompt, where it's got all of the information that you initially trained ChatGPT and so it's that first prompt that you use that, you know, who I am, what I do, who I help, how I help them. That whole thing, you put that into ChatGPT again. So if it starts going off on a tangent, just go, hey, just remember, this is who I am. Can we get back on track here? The other thing is it stops sounding like you. It might start putting in. So for me, I don't use many emojis and there's only like particular (laughs) emojis that I do use. ChatGPT for some reason loves emojis. So I would just say don't use any emojis and I will put them in on my own yeah. accord. Oh, I was just going to um, throw a thousand rocket emojis oh, in there. <laughs> a thousand, yeah. They're all over the place. What else? Yeah, so the other thing is if, yeah, if it's not sounding like you, the best way to go about that is just finding a correlating. So if you're creating an Instagram caption, go and grab three Instagram captions that you have written that you really, really love that just nailed it go and copy them and put them back into ChatGPT and say, hey, 
you're going off on a bit of a tangent. You're not really sounding like me. I'm just going to remind you about my brand voice. Here's three examples of my copywriting so that you can use the word mimic so that you can mimic my brand voice. I've found that's the best word for it to do what you want it to do. If you use, if you can copy my brand voice, what it actually does is it copies chunks out of your captions and then pulls it back into whatever you're trying to generate again. So use that word mimic. Oh, what else? There's heaps of little tips and tricks and things while I'm kind of doing it, I guess. They escape me, but like there's lots, but you're right. Like just continue. Yeah, go shorter, longer, make it, you know, make Mm -hmm. it a bit longer if you need to be quite specific so you know find out how how many characters can you use for an instagram caption i'm pretty sure it's like 2200 so sometimes in Instagram it'll bring back an instagram caption that's like really short and sharp and you could be like hey we can use 2200 characters here let's let's expand on that mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. This is- I, I think that's a really good tip is to keep going back and forwards and get it to yes. refine it yeah. and improve it mm-hmm. i feel like don't don't think of it as like an actual person that would get really frustrated if you went back, you know, like yeah. 20 times <laughs> asking, can you make this better, 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 better? Yeah. Yeah. So and get, you can be stern. Like, like you can be like, no, I hate yes. this. Like, like this sucks. Like write it again, but give it information about how you want it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the biggest piece of advice. Like yeah. it only knows obviously what it's been trained on, which is a huge amount of data set. So the more information that you can give about what you mm-hmm. actually want, the better you're going to be able to get it. So how many words you want, you know, what you want it to sound like. If it needs a hook, you know, have be specific. I'm sure everyone as a VA that's listening has got specific structures and specific ways and specific methods of doing things. You actually need to put those into ChatGPT so that it can mimic that, so it can copy the way that you do things. And that's when you'll start seeing the real difference between like a beginner user to someone that's using it really, really well is that they understand that you can actually train it to work the way that you were. And that's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's the big game changer. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we are going to temporarily interrupt this episode <laughs> because we have a little secret mission that we need your help with. Now, as you know, Sam is not here on this episode. And I'm going to make a prediction that Sam is not going to listen to this entire episode, which is why we're going to interrupt right now and ask if you could help me out. Because I would talk about AI all day, every day, if Sam would let me. So here's the mission. I need you to pause this episode and go and leave a review if you are listening on Apple Podcasts or anywhere else that allows you to leave a review. Or if you're listening somewhere you can't drop in a review we want you to go onto your socials take a screenshot of this episode maybe take a photo of yourself something like that and tell us how much you have loved it let us know that this is the best episode ever we really want you to break the internet and throw sam off completely as to why so many people because of this topic raving about the episode and that means that i get permission to start talking about ai so please help me in the secret (laughs) mission And Jess is going to help you out too by giving you a chat GPT prompt that you can actually use to get it to write you a review. So Jess, take it away. What are we going to put in to chat GPT? Okay, so you would simply put in, hey chat, I am listening to the Sam and Joe VA show and you can even pop in a URL for this podcast episode and just say, I would love your help to write me a quick testimonial that I can leave on Apple that is going to highlight three points that I loved about this episode that is talking about how you can best use ChatGPT as a VA. A couple of things that I really liked about this episode and just put in a stream of consciousness, don't even, don't even put them into dot points or anything, just stream of consciousness, three things that you liked about this episode help me write this testimonial. Thanks, chat. Super easy. <laughs> Copy, <laughs> but maybe a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of editing, make it sound like you, that yes. 20% rule, remember, and yep. then copy and paste that in on Apple Podcasts or just drop that into your stories and make sure you tag us at the VA Foundry. Thank you so much for that help and can't wait to see Sam's reaction when she sees all of the reviews and stories. 
Okay, so let's get out our crystal ball, Jess. I would love to have a bit of, is it a riff? Is that the right word? A riff back and forth combo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A riff with you on what our predictions are with our crystal balls for AI and the how life and business is going to look, how it's going to be different. Let's say within the year and let's mm-hmm. go five years in the future. What do you reckon, Jess? Oh, I think, so right now we've seen that, you know, ChatGPT, I think it's integrations is going to be a really big mm-hmm. thing. So right now we've seen ChatGPT can now access Google Drive and is it Dropbox or is it just, just Google Drive at the moment, I think but it's got access. So Mm -hmm. I think the ability for it to do that is pretty next level already. So I think it's just now it's like, they're just kind of opening the doors at the moment. Like, oh, we'll we'll kind Mm -hmm. of give you integration to this, but then we've got to think about what the next level to that is going to be. So drilling down to like one particular document or like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a whole folder full of, you know, stuff about my brand. So imagine if you had a whole folder that had, you know, your messaging and all of your offers and, you know, just all that ideal client work and you're able to just go, hey, read, read this folder for me. And then it's automations. So read this folder and create an entire launch plan for me. Read this folder and create all of the content you know, two weeks of content that I can put on my Instagram stories and you could have another document that outlines the process or the structure of how you want your Instagram stories and it just does it for you. So I think integrations and automations, just next level. I don't know if that's going to be in the next 12 months, but yeah, like we're kind of already nearly there in terms of using Zapier and Make, you know, Mm. but you do have to set that all up yourself. I feel like ChatGPT is going to get just a lot, a ton easier, and probably take over having to use up here and having to use Make. I feel like you'd be able to do it in the whole in the one platform. Yeah. Okay. And so, what do you think it's going to look like in five years' time? Oh, it's hard. It's hard to think about five years of such massive technological advances. Yeah. Hey? You can't like. It's just. It's obviously now with with OpenAI teaming up with Apple. So it's already on our mm. MacBooks. So we've got ChatGPT on our MacBooks now that I got released like this week, so a couple of days ago. So you've got ChatGPT just sitting on your desktop. I think Apple are going to drop their new watch generally in September. They do a new watch drop. So, yeah, that's obviously going to have ChatGPT directly on your just watch. So we'll, to your watch, right? Yeah, and you'll be able to just talk to your watch instead of Siri or Siri is going to now be accessing to all of ChatGPT data, which will be nuts. So I think it's like more, it, obviously it's going to be just trained on a ton more data by five years. I think obviously it's going to be connected to the internet. One of the biggest things is, you know, the medical and health profession where they're always just like, it's not like, it's not accurate. So I think they're going to have to fill that void in terms of, you know, the health and the medical professions being able to connect it to the internet and connect it to research papers that are accurate. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just going to be the next five years in terms of making sure that the data sets are right, relevant to us. I think there's just going to be a lot more integration in our lives of AI. So, you know, Mm -hmm. they talk about like if you just do it, like I do a Google alert. So every day I've got emails that come through. So anything in the media that says ChatGPT as a keyword or AI as a keyword or women in tech as a keyword, I get emails for all of those. And every day there is something like, you know, there's a new company. There's so many companies that we've never heard of that are building with AI. So yes, in the medical field, like we're talking about, I know in Australia, I've got a lot of Ella, my five-year-old's mum friends, nurses, and they're having like massive cuts to nursing at the moment here in Australia. And, you know, we were having a conversation the other day and it was like, well, we're probably going to end up rocking up to a hospital and you're going to just be faced with a computer. You're probably going to get pricked like, and it's going to read your DNA, read your blood. And it's going to be like, you know, tell me, tell me, like, cause we can talk to it. Tell me mm-hmm. what's going on. 
So that eliminates the need for those triage nurses, right? And then it's probably going to just tell you where in the hospital that you need to go in order to be able to see the act the right person if you need to see mm-hmm. a person. Like, mm-hmm. so there's, sorry, I think, and then for business, I guess that's why we want to be talking about what this podcast is about. Oh, that's interesting. Um, oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I but about that. it's just mm. everyday life. But in terms of business, yeah, I just, it's just going to obviously get a ton, a ton better. I think in five years, I can't even imagine what we're going to be able to do. I think it's yeah. just going to be even a lot more accessible. It's just going to be so much more mainstream. I think it's going mm. to be like the internet where in five years time, it's going to be hard pressed to find someone that still isn't using ChatGPT if they've got an online yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, for me, I feel like what is coming, and we've seen this with Apple's announcement about Siri now or soon when it gets released in the new version of the iPhone, actually being able to go off and do things in other apps. I think we're going to see a lot more of that where it's taking that kind of automation next level where it actually can go off onto the internet, go and book flights for you or go Mm. and use a tool on your behalf. I think we're definitely going to see that and probably you know, maybe kind of two years time. And I feel like we talked about this on the AI webinar that there are going to be digital teams in every single business. So you're going to have actually like AI agents in your business in a team. So you're going to have a mix of human team members and AI team members. And those team members are going to, you know, be able to action parts of workflows and they're going to Mm -hmm. be kind of like a, a setup maybe review, maybe not set and forget, but they're going to go off and they're going to do their jobs that you have assigned to them 24 seven every day. Yeah. And that'll be all the data, the data stuff, right. That, you know, why, why do you need a person sitting there looking at data when you've got Mm -hmm. an AI assistant that can do it for you so much faster. And then it allows it free, like who really needs to be doing data entry? Like, so it's going to free up those people to do stuff that they probably really want to be doing. But yeah, for sure. Like that's, I, yeah, that idea is amazing. Can you just, and I'm sure there's already big business that are doing, big corps that are doing that already, where they've already got, or they're wanting to, <laughs> like to set up these AI teams that are yeah. just going to be doing all that work. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a big opportunity for virtual assistants. And if you're listening and you're kind of like, what's going to be coming? The important thing I think is to, you know, learn from someone like you, Jess. Go into a membership, go into Jess's $7 membership, like even dip your toes in and start learning and learn how to prompt. Like mastering prompting is the key to getting ChatGBT to actually saving you time and helping you in your work that you do for clients and in your work that you do in your own business, your on your business work. I think that that's like the first thing. And then the second thing is to really start to learn about what is it going to look like in the future in terms of these digital teams? How can you be that bridge between your clients and AI and help them maybe specialize in an automation tool like Zapier, go all in on automation, like really look for an opportunity for how you can help your clients in a different way using AI and automation in the future. So and it's not even that. Here. Like I think, I think you need to also like you, you've gone into business obviously to enjoy it. So mm-hmm. you know if you're not, because like obviously when you're doing automations and things, that's quite process orientated. So if yeah. that's not you, and you're maybe more of a let's say branding kind of person where you have got more soft skills. That's amazing too, but you need to be able to utilize that. So your way of being able to grow your business instead of, you know, going doubling down into automations and integrations and things. So don't be like, oh, that's the only way that I'm going to be able to make money in business as a VA. It's not. You need to do what you're good at naturally. I like it's your zone of genius. So if you are more of that creative, Use AI to like start generating images. Use AI to, you know, really make sure that you're able to completely nail your client's brand voice, you know, Mm -hmm. make sure that you're able to, yeah, write emails and content and stuff that is just using ChatGPT that is just so like what your client would put out themselves that they are just like, I I don't even remember what I wrote and what you wrote for me, you know, Mm -hmm. so there's not just really process tech driven 
you know, yeah. avenues for you to grow your business, there are other ways that you can as a VA. So I don't want people to get scared as well and be like, oh, there's just, there's not going to be an opportunity for me. I'm going to end up hating my job because I don't want to be doing Zapier. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You don't. So I yeah. think this is, this is like, there is soft skills as well is going to be a really, really big space mm -hmm. because we do have AI and that's, that's not soft skills. So, so it's very masculine. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Yeah. And okay, let, let's have a chat about some of your memberships and how people can actually get in and start learning from you, Jess. So I know that you've been mentioning on stories lately that you're having a bit of a change with your membership. So fill us in. What, what are the opportunities here for VAs? Yeah, so we've covered. So I think if you have not used ChatGPT at all, you've got absolutely no idea and you're like, I just want to know really short and sharp how this can work for me what it can do, how I can start creating strategic content that does sound like me, GPT Party, that's the $7 membership, that's your best place to be in. But mm -hmm. if you want to grow from there, if you are like, I can 100% see the benefit of what AI can do for me as a business owner, my second membership, AI BFF, and that's the, that's the announcement. So AIBFF has been around for coming up to an entire year and I started it with zero content in there. So it was like a bit of a beta. I was like, I know what this, what I want this to look like and every month I'm just going to do a content drop. And that's what I did. But I also started listening to the clients inside there and listening to what they wanted and needed. And so I was kind of just like populating content a mm. bit ad hoc. And now fast forward, and I look at the space and I'm like, oh, there's just like a lot of resources in there and it's not the roadmap that I really wanted it to be like. And so I'm going to fix all of that. So what I'm doing is I'm actually removing that AI PFF. I'm deleting the whole thing and I'm starting a complete fresh. So I'm still mapping out what that is going to be looking like. I'm the type of person that you know, I changed my mind a bit and I, you know, I, I go a lot of with the flow. I don't like as much as I like. And you structure. listen to your clients too, right? What yeah, totally. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So we've done a whole big piece in there where I'm me getting feedback about what they like and what they don't like so much. So I am going to be putting all of that together and I'm just writing out, you know, the outline and I'll start kind of putting together what each of the videos is going to be about. But for me, I've gone down a big rabbit hole of using bots which is like the AI assistance GPT is using OpenAI. And that's the way that I've been creating my content. It's the way that my clients have been creating their content. So I create bots for you inside AI BFF. And the implementation rates that I've been seeing for my clients have just gone just skyrocketing because what they're able to do is you sit down and watch a five-minute video about the strategy of Instagram stories and then go and use one of my bots to be like, okay, now write my Instagram stories for me. And mm. you can like, instead of being like, hey, this is my strategy for Instagram stories, go and write them yourself. The bot does it for you. I've trained the bot in my strategies and my structures and the way that I write my own to go and do it for you. So yeah, so that's the way that AIBFF is going to be built out basically of super clear roadmap, really short mm. and sharp strategy videos with bots that basically will create the content for you every step of the way. And that goes through starting off with a really clear brand strategy. We touched on, you know, before there's, you've got no, no business using ChatGPT if you don't understand your brand yet, <laughs> but you can definitely use ChatGPT to get really clear on your brand. So that's the step, first step that we do in inside AIBFF. And then we move into AI and ChatGPT. And then we move into content creation and then I'm changing it to be a business module. So I know there's a lot of people that do want to create offers and learn how to launch. So that'll be in there as well. So it's really comprehensive around how to use ChatGPT, but also how to grow your business while you are learning how to use it. And that's the really mm. special part of it. Amazing. So just should... Those who are listening and want to learn from you, hop into AI BFF and it will change over time, but they can jump in now. What's the 
that's the plan. Yeah, so you can jump in now if you'd like. Yeah, and there will be obviously changes. So you'll just get an email to be like, hey, click this link, you're invited to the new space. And that's pretty much the changeover, cool. making it as seamless as possible. But yeah, I'm so excited. It's just going to be, yeah, amazing. Oh, amazing. amazing. I mean, I love AI BFF as it is. <laughs> so if you're making it even better, like yeah. I am all in there for that. So yeah. amazing. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, Jess, where do our listeners follow you? Where is the best place? Where are you? Where do you hang out? Yeah. So mostly on Instagram, I'm at the Jess Clark. That's my handle. And otherwise, I send my emails. So if you follow me, you will get an automation that will send you a DM and it'll say, hey, do you want some free bots? And if you want those free bots, you just say yes. And then that'll put you onto my email list. So you'll start to hear more about me and how more I can help you. And yeah, lots of lots of free tips and tricks on how to use ChatGPT and prompts and things that you're going to love. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And they have We've covered a lot today, but do you have any final parting words that you would like to leave with those virtual assistants who are listening? Yeah, I think like we talked about it, where it's just really go back to you and take stock of who you are as a VA, as a person. What do you really, really love to do and why you went into business and really start working with ChatGPT to figure out how you can grow your business really utilizing those natural skills and talents and things that you've got mm. but use chat gpt every step of the way that is my biggest advice don't think that it's only for content creation it is there as your business bestie like for everything mm -hmm. yeah amazing advice all right Okay, let's wrap it up there and we're going to do a final pun to sign <laughs> off. So for any Hunger Games fans, here is your AI pun. May the odds be ever coded in your favor. Yep. Thank you so much, <laughs> Jess, for coming on to this episode. I have absolutely loved this chat and can't wait to see what is in store for you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Sam and Joe VA Show. If you'd like to find out more, head to the VA Foundry website to check out the mastermind and the amazing resources, courses, and coaching. You can find us at thevafoundry.com.